But this is why the spine is such an important center. Now, I know because there's a couple of you guys in here. Ruben, you're with Ruben? Yes. Okay, cool. Just one, I didn't know if you were from the yoga. One event we just did where Ty Dorn and I taught a class together, she taught the yoga portion. Um, and really helped people connect to the chakras or the energy systems in the body. And then I played music to awaken the chakras and the energy system. So if you, I had the good fortune of studying at the Southern California University of Health Sciences. That's where I got my degree in chiropractic medicine. It was where I also got my uh, master's degree in acupuncture. And there was a guy there who wrote a book called The Scientific Basis of the Chakras. He was a really famous Ayurvedic doctor. And he, his whole proposition, which was so beautiful, is that all these subtle energy centers, like the third eye center here, it's really arising out of the pituitary gland. The crown chakra was arising out of the pineal gland. The, the thyroid and the cervical plexus, the brachial plexus, gave rise to the throat chakra, the heart, the, the solar plexus, plexus of nerves there, plexus of nerves around the heart sacral plexus, coccygeal plexus, so every, all these subtle energy things that sort of seers and visionaries and mystics have been talking about for thousands of years, we actually now have a physiological basis, an anatomical basis for understanding, which means that we can totally, by understanding this stuff, reshape and reform and reheal and bring in energy where it's been broken. We can bring in life where it's been lost. And that a lot of these amazing subtle energy things that we've known for eons and eons, we now have an understanding of it. And in my estimation, by working with the spine, especially the way we do here, you can move that energy in a very transformative way very quickly. So anyway, we good there? Any questions, any comments? Cool. Now we want to just go a little bit deeper in this emotional piece. I find this really, really interesting. So before I get to the C and the U, you can take a guess at what those are in a moment, how many thoughts do you think we think in a day? Anybody care to guess? Designed not to think gives you a million That's right. <laughs> the, the mind is designed to think. And if you try not to think, that itself is a thought. And then whatever you attempt to not focus on, you're actually putting in the foreground. So it's that. Is it 333,000? That would be good. The, the number that I heard, and it could be that in, a, in an exceptionally fast thinking person, that this is from the University of Pennsylvania and Martin Seligman's work, but he said the average person has about... 80,000 thoughts a day. Still a lot. Now, so we're going to put 80K here. I, I really want to have this conversation, and just to create context for everyone, I, I'm bringing this up again as we sort of dive deeper into the stress and the emotional piece. Because the thoughts we think are linked to the emotions we feel and how our body's functioning. The thoughts we habitually think often becomes the words we say and the things we do. And the things we do and the words we say become your life. <laughs> Ergo, therefore, it would make sense, it would behoove us to understand this mechanism, and if at all possible, to transform this. Now, what percentage of those thoughts do you think were positive for the average person? So what percentage of those 80,000 thoughts do you think were positive for the average person? Less than 50. Keep going down. It, it, was, it was about 10, uh, 15 to 20 percent. So that means for the average person, 75 to 80 percent of their thoughts are not positive. They are not self-compassionate. They're not self-loving. They're not supportive. And I find this to be, unfortunately, incredibly true for all of us. Tara Brock, an amazing teacher, I highly encourage her book, Radical Acceptance. In her book, she called it the trance of unworthiness. That most people are walking around in a trance of unworthiness. You know, we, there was a great Zen master from Japan, Dogen, who said the following, enlightenment is to live without, is in the oneness of things, to live without anxiety about imperfection. Being connected to the oneness of all things, we live without anxiety about imperfection. So forget the Buddhist part, forget the Japanese part. Imagine how awesome it would be to live without anxiety about imperfection. Whether it's our own physical imperfections, our own emotional and mental hang-ups, our 
financial situations, our jobs, our career stuff, our, our marriage, I mean, whatever the thing is, because we've all got this whole smorgasbord buffet of full life. And the beauty of it is its imperfection. However, the human mind, from the perspective of disconnection and stress, generally tends to focus on the negative a lot, and it becomes the trance of unworthiness. There's nowhere to go with this. There's no energy there. It's totally energy poor. But new energy comes in and something changes. Now, just out of curiosity, what percentage of those 80,000 thoughts per day were the same as yesterday? This was also part of the research. So, Unsolved things are always in your mind every day. That's right. So what, what percentage would you throw this? 75. Yeah, it was like 80 to 90 percent. So really, this is amazing. If you just, just stay with me, just a reality, an, a, an alternate reality here. When you're thinking again and again and again, have you noticed that your thoughts come usually in the sound of talk, like you'll hear talk, or you'll see movie pictures, but they're not what's happening right now. So 90% of the time, you're never here. Thought is a beautiful thing. Like I'm thinking right now, there's, there's an intelligence that's using my thought as a means, as a vehicle to communicate with you. I can recall data, I can recall stats, I can draw in my lexicon of words, you know, I can put sentences together, hopefully this will probably end in about 10 minutes. But I can use that, but see if I'm lost in thought all the time, if I'm lost in thought all the time, where am I? I'm never here. And what's interesting is thought has a vibrational component to it. And I know that can sound a little weird, but thought in emotion has a certain vibrational tone to it. Vibration, so if, if, I, if I had a, a, a sheet of iron fillings on it, right? Just imagine a bunch of like iron filings, disorganized, just a heap of iron filings. But I put a perfectly harmonic D note right through that iron it would organize those iron fillings in, into a unique shape. The sound om, which is often said in yoga class, is this kind of weird, unique, very powerful harmonic sound. So if we per, put in a perfectly coherent harmonic om sound into iron fillings, it forms them into the most beautiful shape. Did anybody see Matsuri Emoto's work on the hidden messages in water? So they would funnel intention prayer and certain things into water and then study how the water crystals change shape. They would also do things like hatred. I hate you. I'm terrible. I hate myself. They would use pollution. Um, they would put all kinds of different negative disempowering messages in and they had this other group where they put in all these amazingly positive messages. And what was amazing is the difference of say, I love you. I'm enough. Compassion produce these really harmonic, coherent shapes, these crystalline forms that reflect organized life. Whereas the dissonant feelings, the negative emotions that were put into the water produce dissonant, cacophonous shapes that don't have any structural integrity. Isn't that amazing? So thoughts and emotions become sort of a vibrational field which definitely then informs matter. Said another way, unresolved stress, unresolved pain, 80,000 thoughts a day, 90% of which were yesterday, 70% of those were not awesome. It makes sense why we often f kind of stay stuck in a rut. One can argue that this is a good reason why pain doesn't heal, and I'll go over that in just a second. And I'll talk to you about a couple studies that are mind-blowing about just even pain alone. Does it make sense? Mm 